ಅವಮೂರತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಪಲಪನ ವಿಸರೆ ನಿ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಳ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನೀ ಜೈ ಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನೀ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ನೀ ಜೈ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಓ ಮೈರಿ ಆರ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ದ ಪಾಥ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಯುರ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಲಿಬರೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸಂತ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಭಗತ್ ಜಿ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಹರಿ ಭಕ್ತೋಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ in the world there have been many many famous authors activists presidents iconic figures in general that have revolutionized and changed mankind in some way for their betterment those iconic figures have spoken various kinds of quotes that have become famous throughout the world where some people read these quotes and live by these quotes and or some people become motiv- motivated by just merely thinking on such quotes if we can ponder upon some of these quotes f- the famous author david allen once said you can do anything but not nothing you can do everything but not nothing mahatma gandhi once said you must be the change you wish to see in the world nonetheless the 26th president of the united states theodore roosevelt said it is hard to fail but it is worse never to have tried to succeed now these kinds of quotes we hear we learn in school in history class or in various different subjects our teachers say these quotes and from these quotes some kids develop you can say some kind of uh motivation some kind of energy but it seems that in the spiritual world that whatever simple messages the ekantik sadpurushas have taught us have become or are the deepest principles in the scriptures in the vachanamrut garuda middle chapter 13th vachanamrut shri ji mard states however such discourses regarding the nature of god cannot be understood by one's self even from the scriptures even though these facts may be in the scriptures it is only when the satpurush manifests on this earth and one hears them being narrated to him and then one understands them they cannot however be understood by one's intellect alone even from the scriptures maharaj is saying that no matter how many scriptures or how many novels or books one reads one cannot understand what these novel or what these scriptures are saying meaning the holy scriptures it's only when bhagwan's god sent you can say ekantik satpurush comes on this earth and from his mouth one listens to these words even small quotes from his mouth then one has or develops spiritual energy i'm reminded of our puja guruji's famous quote that i want to do today's lecture on very simple very short but very effective and spiritually charged puja guruji says respect all follow one hate none now these are just simple words put together but the message that he gives is very powerful 
the message that it gives is even more, you can say, impactful in the life of one who wants to attain liberation than any of these quotes that I read previously. Why? Because, sure, these, who, these people who spoke were famous in the world, but they weren't famous in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Whereas, on the other hand, our Puja Guruji, in a Kantik Satpurush, in God realized Satpurush, a Satpurush who has constant contact with Bhagwan, who can talk with him just like how you and your friend can conversate if your friend was in front of you and you would be able to talk to him in the same way our Pucha Guruji has God realization where he is able to talk to Bhagwan in front such kind of a Sadhpurush once said respect all follow one hate none very simple but it, it just seems like it has all the essence of the scriptures into this just into these six words and that's why many 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 kids of Loyadam Parivar in the USA and beyond are, motiva are motivated by this quote now first and foremost respect all Bhagwan Swamiran teaches us to respect all and due to that Puja Guruji in this quote his very first words respect all Respecting all means respecting all deities, respecting all human beings, respecting all animals, and respecting all trees and herbs and each and every living organism in the world. Everything belongs to Bhagwan Swami If we refuse to, if we refuse or fail to respect everything in the world, we are indirectly disrespecting Bhagwan. Now, Puja Guruji. It seems like there is many, many people in the world that say something, but it's not in their actions. It's not in their character. It's just said for the world. It's just said so that it looks good from the outside. But in reality, however or whatever words have Puja Guruji has spoken, respect all, follow one, hate none. All of these words match his life, his characteristic his personality, his divine persona, I can say. What we want to do is dissect this very quote and see in the life of Puja Guruji how he possesses respecting all, following one, and hating none. So then from that, we can determine that Puja Guruji's spiritual level is very high and we can understand him on a better level. So first and foremost, respect all. So, I want to share Puja Guruji's incident, incidences in his life in the past where, one by one, where he has matched these words so we can also see how, how his greatness is spread upon satsang right now. First and foremost, respect all. Let's see how Puja Guruji in this charitra, in this prasang, he, he, ha he you can say, displays his uh, characteristic. On one incident, Puja Guruji was going to a function and was passing the city of Vadodara. Puja Guruji's driver was going a little fast and by mistake he got into an accident and hit a motorbike from the back. Man on the motorbike fell down but got up immediately and became furious due to the accident. He rushed to the door side where Puja Guruji was sitting and commanded Puja Guruji to get out of the car. Now, Puja Guruji wasn't even driving the car, obviously. It was the driver. Puja Guruji was just sitting beside him. But this person got out or got up and went to the door side of where Puja Guruji was sitting. He yelled at Puja Guruji that you have damaged my bike when in reality a small dent was made by the accident. Puja Guruji did not say a single word at that time. Then the angry person slapped Puja Guruji on the face in front of Puja Santo and the driver. This person became so angry that he slapped Puja Guruji, even a saint, without knowing who he is, how he is. And by a small accident, he slapped Puja Guruji right there and then. Puja Santo and the driver were ready to give the person a, a sound thrashing by hurting 
for hurting Puja Guruji. But when Puja Guruji came, uh, saw them coming to beat this person up, he told them to sit back in the car. Then he asked the person, how much do you want for this damage that has been done to your motorbike? The person requested 5,000 rupees. In reality, the damage that was done was not even close to 5,000 rupees. But this driver's or this motorbike person's mind must have been a little demonic and he asked for 5,000 rupees. Puja Guruji called the driver and told him to give him 10,000 rupees. Instead of 5, he told him to give 10,000 rupees to him so that he would be satisfied and he would not become, you can say, disheartened by the uh, by, by Puja Guruji's action, which was in reality nothing. Then Puja Guruji humbly apologized to the person and then the person left the scene. From this story, we can obviously see that Puja Guruji respects everything, no matter what. That person was unknown. Puja Guruji did not know his name and he did not know Guruji's name. Yet, we can see from this incident that Puja Guruji looks at everyone whereas Bhagwan is inside of them. He respects the most, even utmost evil. He respects them to the maximum because he knows that this human being, this is his body, yes, but inside of his soul, Bhagwan resides there, Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Without Bhagwan Swaminarayan residing inside of him, how could he move, how could he talk, how could he walk, how could he eat, how could he sleep? Each and every action he is doing is empowered by Bhagwan Swaminarayan inside of him. Puja Guruji's vision, even he has another quote, Anu Parmanuma Maro Maharaj, meaning in each and every atom, Bhagwan resides. Bhagwan resides in each and every atom. Now, if we look upon everything, we don't see atoms, but we see you can say columns and pillars and lights and balcony and different different decorations and chairs and carpet but are we able to see Bhagwan? are we at that spiritual level but Puja Guruji's spiritual level is not measurable by our eyes but we can definitely see from this prasang that his words his quote respect all follow one hate none he definitely abides by the first respect all by this incident. Moving on, follow one. Now, even though we respect all gods, we should only follow one god. Puja Guruji in this quote is talking about following one god, follow one. But not only that, also following one guru, one spiritual master. Heading in one positive direction will bring us to our final destination. For example, there could be many ways to get to a school, to your school from your home. But which way do you choose? By choosing one definite road, we can reach our destination easily. In the same way, respect all gods, but choose one to make our path easier for attainment. There is only one Supreme Lord, and that's our Bhagwan Swaminare. Puja Guruji's quote, Sarva Parito Ek Maro His faith in Bhagwan Swami Narayan, that He is the most definite, supreme Lord of Lords, supreme God, no matter whoever comes next to Him, or whoever, no matter whoever wants to say anything, and if everything goes away, He would still only stay on one side, like last week when we heard. Sadguru Nityanand Swami's prasang, when the Satsangi Jivanam was being written, Bhagwan Swaminarayan tested Nityanand Swami. And Nityanand Swami went on one side, and Bhagwan and all the Nan Santos went on the other side, and all the Hari Bhaktos. Yet, Nityanand Swami did not waver in his faith. In the same exact position, you can say, Puja Guruji, no matter what happens, he would never waver in this you can say faith of Bhagwan Swaminarayan to be supreme Lord himself and 
from such a small age, we can say. How does he follow one? Well, let's take a look at the Prasang. When he was small, and I'm sure many of you heard of this, but when he was small, in the first grade, I believe, on Saturdays, they had story time. Now, I think this uh, system still goes by goes about in uh, American, American school systems where you have to share a story with your classmates and there's turns and your teacher picks on you and you go, maybe the next day another person goes. And in the same way, and at that time, about, you can say, 53, 52 years ago, Pujaguruji, he was put into this situation where it was his it was his turn to tell a story. From that time, Pujaguruji, when he stood up in front of the class, his name was Vinod before he took initiation as a sadhu. He, at that small age, that tender age of seven, he talked about the story of Parvatbhai and how Parvatbhai, in short, I can say, was a farmer by occupation, but his spiritual level was very high. Now one day he was plowing, and he was plowing his field and thinking about Bhagwan, and he thought to himself that how could, what are the, the 24 avatars, how are they like? Avara, Kach, Nurusi, how, how are these avatars like? Just a simple question arised in his mind. Right there and then, in the sky, he saw Bhagwan Swami Narayan's beautiful form. And inside, from inside of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's form, all the 24 avatars, one by one, came out and gave darshan to Parvatbhai. And then all 24 avatars came back inside, proving that the Supreme Lord is only Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Because no avatars, if they were powerful than Bhagwan, can go, come back inside of Bhagwan. But all of the 24 avatars, incarnations, gave darshan to Parvatpe and then went back inside of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, proving that Bhagwan Swaminarayan is Saropari, supreme. So in that factor, Pujaguruji told this exact story in that class at such an age. And a couple years back, he shared this with all the santos and bhaktos that when I was at that age, I was telling this, I told this story of Bhagwan Swamiran to be supreme from that age. And he said that I I have not brought this knowledge or I have not been taught this. I have brought it from somewhere else, meaning from Akshardham, because our Puja Guruji is an Anadi Mukta of Akshardham that was sent by Bhagwan to do the works here. And as all of you can see, the spread of Loya Dham and such kind of Ekantik santos and Ekantik devotees have been molded and have been made by the very efforts of Puja Guruji. That we have to definitely thank him for. But this prasanga of following one is definitely seen in Puja Guruji's heart. Not only that, but his nishta, his faith in Dada Guruji is something that is remarkable. And from that age, since ever since he met our Dada Guruji, it seems like that he has not seen anything but his words, his agna, his commands. And from that very moment until now, our Guruji says that it is the very reason I have reached this position is due to my Dada or due to my Guruji. And for all of us, our Dada Guruji. So his faith is obviously renowned and these words of following one, one matches as well. And finally, hate none. Now, to hate none, you have to have the attribute of forgiveness. Forgiveness is such a, you can say, great attribute to possess. And just how great it is, it's very difficult as well to possess. But it was nothing, or it is nothing for Puja Guruji. It was easily, it's, it just seems like it flows through him. And every day in his life, somewhere, somehow, if someone makes a mistake, or if he has to tolerate for someone, 
He is always, always forgiving and forgiving. It seems like he has just a bag of forgiveness, just an unlimited bag of forgiveness, and he's just forgiving everyone every day. Remarkable. From that, we can see that no human can possess such kind of a quality. Because you know how in, la in labs or uh, science labs, there are surveys that are taken, various surveys. And what, what they do is they pick 100 random people. And what they do is they put the survey on them. And they see that how, you know, what the levels or what the results came out to. But if we were to see and put in, or if we were to perform an experiment, a science experiment on this attribute itself on a hundred random people and see how, how high their forgiveness level was, it would be very difficult to find and it would not be even close to how high of a level Puja Guruji has in this, just, in this one virtue. So taking a look, hate none. Let's see the prasang, how Puja Guruji possesses this virtue. Forgiveness is an extraordinary quality of God and his ekantik sadhu. Even if he is insulted, offended, or robbed, a true ekantik sadhu always forgives. He never seeks revenge or punishment for those that have harmed him. A person who can put the past behind him himself for forgive those who have wronged him and even pray for their well-being are true, truly great. Puja Guruji has attained these heights. Our Guruji's great, greatest strength lies in his ability to forgive others without ever reminding them of their mistake as if they, as it, if, as it, as if they had never occurred. A person who is there was a person who was living in New Jersey for many years, opposed Puja Guruji's arrival in the USA from 1993. He was a businessman, and he spent hundreds of uh, dollars to print newsletters against Puja Guruji's arrival, Padramni and Sabha. He would promote, do not call this sadhu to your home, do not do his Padramni, do not, do not take him to Sabha's, or do not give him the mic. He's just a demonic-minded person. He just, this was what he did. So ever since Puja Guruji arrived the very first time in the United States, this was his business, you can say. Also, he even called devotees and told them that I heard that this saint is coming to your sabhas. Cancel it. Cancel it. This saint is like this. This saint is like this. Spreading negativity throughout the atmosphere. For many years, he opposed Guruji's, uh, Guruji and his, you can say, Vichran in the United States. He also was a devotee of Bhagavan Swaminan. What do you know? And he is also director of a, a big temple in New Jersey. He was financially and physically performed much seva in the mandir. And he was, you can say, very, very, uh, you could say, wealthy. But... He performed even every, he performed each and every action with ego, as he had insulted Guruji many times. His son. He had a son. He be became you can say addicted to drinking alcohol. Because of drinking ar alcohol every day, he was influenced. He was he 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 had blood cancer symptoms. So he went to the hospital check up. And he found out that he has cancer for sure. So he was admitted into the hospital. So Puja Guruji got the news that, you know, this person's son has been admitted in the hospital. So right there and then, he called that person who opposed Guruji. And he said that, I heard that your son is in critical condition. I want to come and visit. I want to pray. I want to do dun. And I want to give Bhagwan's Prasad in Upani and Har garland to him so that he gets better. So the person said, okay. So Puja Guruji went to the hospital and he went there and he blessed him and everything. Yet, somehow, his son's, you can say, health did not improve. And 
his son passed away. So, Puja Guruji, what he did was, all those people in the funeral that were there were opposers of Puja Guruji, yet he went to the funeral. He went to his funeral, the son's funeral, of the of the of the person the demonic person and he over there did not get the mic yet he respectfully bowed puja guruji put a garland around the the uh the the son and then he left the scene but from 1993 till you can say 2013 that's 20 years that person opposed Puja Guruji, yet hate none. He never in his mind thought bad, but only wished well, yet due to, you can say, hurting or insulting the Ekantik Sadpurush, Bhagwan punished that person by, you can see, his son becoming in critical condition and then even passing away. Yet, Puja Guruji went there in the hospital at first, blessed him there, and then again went to the funeral and blessed the, blessed the son there, everything. Yet, it, it's, it's very, 20 years, someone breaking your efforts, you were trying to do the right thing, you were trying to make ekantik haribhaktos, you're trying to preach the supremacy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan in such adverse circumstances at that time in 1993. Right now we're living in a great, you can say, great, great, you can say circumstance position. But in 1993, it wasn't that way. Doing such kinds of efforts, yet everything being cut down, everything being opposed, yet Puja Guruji did not keep even one single thought negative about that person and and due to that you can see that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is with him each and every second of his each and every action we can see right now that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is performing everything through him may it be the you can say the vikas or the the growth of Vartal Dham in India or may it be Loyadam Mandir in India, or maybe Loyadam USA here in the United States, various chapters, centers, or around the world, United Kingdom, <coughs> Africa, Canada, so on and so forth. Bhagwan Swami Narayan is with him. It is seen. But it was all due to Puja Guruji's persona, his, his, his ability to forgive. And not only that, but his quote, respect all, follow one, hate none. And right now we can see that Puja Guruji <coughs> is renowned in the Sampradaya. His greatness is known throughout the whole Swamran movement. Everyone in the world acknowledges is him, understands that this is a true sadhu, understands that this is an ekantik satpurush all due to his divine personality if we can just mere understand some of these stories pick up and absorb and understand and associate and attach with such kind of a satpurush we can also attain bhagwan without a doubt in a very short span of time in this lifetime saying this my humble Jay Swami Narayan.
वर्णिवे शर्मणीय दर्शन मंदहासुचिराज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदन महम विचित धर्मनंदन महम विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज ने जय और माटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड अवार्ड बिलोड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कचोली ब्रैसन पूज्य पाथ गुरु जन ऑल ऑफ डिवटीज जय स्वामीनारायण इन द वचनामृत 59 ऑफ गड़ा फर्स्ट चैप्टर भगवान स्वामीनारायण ग्लोरीफाई हिज एकांतिक सन भगवान हिमसेल्फ सेज वन कैन अटेन एकांतिक धर्म ओनली फ्रॉम समवन हु हैज ऑलरेडी अटेन द स्टेट ऑफ एकांतिक धर्म बट बिफोर दैट भगवान स्वामीनारायण सेज इन द वचनावृत फिफ्टी नाइन ओगर चैप्टर दैट ओनली भगवान एंड संत कैन ग्रैंड अल्टीमेट लिबरेशन टू द जीव So in the Vachanamrut Bhagwan, in many Vachanamruts, Bhagwan Swaminar himself says the glory and greatness of Bhagwan's Ekantik Son. Even Sadguru Sri Gunaditanand Swami also says in his talk that whenever one attain the company of Bhagwan's such Ekantik Son, only by the association with the son one can attain the divine form of god many other scriptures also says the same because this is the principle of swaminarayan philosophy after attaining the this satsang even one who has not a not any kind of knowledge regarding the form of bhagwan but if one practice satsang with the company of such ekantik sant then by the grace of that sant one can acquire all kinds of knowledge regarding bhagwan's divine form in this way such ekantik sant not gives only the knowledge regarding the form of god but also whenever we need whenever we require certain kind of help from the sant then such a kind of sant definitely give all kinds of help to us many times even such a kind of sant they use their divine power to make the devotees happy and many times even by removing bad qualities from devotee's heart such a kind of sant they try to make the devotee is happy just as last time we listen the incident happen in life of sadasiv bai of kambat in the same way many other incident also happen in the satsang that those devotees who had any slightest desire slightest bodily desire remain in their heart and when they have the unparalleled love towards bhagwan's ekantik sant and because of that affection if those devotees attach to those sant then those ekantik sant they definitely help those devotees to remove their bodily desire from their heart and those santo always try to install the divine form of god in those devotees heart as we listen sadguru gopanand swami how he removed bodily desire from the heart of sadasiv bai in the same way sadguru gopanand swami's another incident happened in the city of vadodara many times sadguru gopanand swami came there in the city 
for the preaching of the satsang perspective to the people and he even spread satsang among the people in the city of vadodara so when you were gopanand sami came there in the vadodara at the time very few devotees who came to meet santo because there were no too much devotees in the city first as sadguru muktanand swami he came very first time in the city not for preaching the satsang perspective to the people but for the debate and after he won in the all kinds of debates happen at the time and at the time the king sayaji rao he gave the title swami narayano vijayate taram and by this title that was the first time bhagwan swami narayan satsang started or begins in the city after that muktanand so many times came there he preached the devotees and in this way some devotees they gather in one one devotee's home and they did satsang at the time and after that sadguru gopanand swami he also frequently came there to preach the satsang and in this way satsang spread in many to uh, many people's life as many brahmins they become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan amongst them there was one his name was krishna ram sastri he was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan as well as as he was a sastri meaning a scholar in a sanskrit so he was also a member one of the member in the courtier of the sayaji rao along with him there were many other scholars but none of them the believe bhagwan swami narayan as a bhagwan only krishna ram sastri as he became a devotee he only understand bhagwan swami narayan's glory and greatness so many times the other scholars they try to understand and they they try to make um, they try to make disturbance in the devotion of this krishna ram sastri towards bhagwan but krishna ram sastri he was after associating with gopanand swami and other santo he became very firm in the satsang and that's why he gave reply in such a way that no one can dare to say any single word or single ill words towards bhagwan swami and or our satsang once upon a time there was a lunar eclipse after some days and for that in the courtier of sayaji rao some scholars those who were upon opposite of uh, those who were opponents of bhagwan swami and satsang and our fellowship they declare that after certain days meaning after two days there was a lunar eclipse and krishna ram sastri he was also a scholar so he say no there will be no any lunar eclipse after two days then what to do as the opponents they have the astrology scriptures astrology books so again they calculated and they said no after two days there will be a lunar eclipse and krishna ram sastri his astrology book at his home so even without see without thinking anything else he said no there will be no any lunar eclipse after two days then the opponents one of the scholar from the opponents he said if there will be no any lunar eclipse after two days then i will then in this courtier 
i myself said amongst all these in the witness of all these other scholars and other people that please behead me after two days if there will be no any luminous eclipse and then krishnaram sastri he also said the same if there will be any lunar eclipse after two days then please cut off my head now that was the oath if there will be lunar eclipse after two days then krishnaram sastri have to die and if there will be no any lunar eclipse after two days then the opponents he will be died so what to do after krishnaram sastri reached to his home and he opened his astrology book then and he calculated then he found his mistake there will be lunar eclipse after two days then now what to do because if there will be lunar eclipse after two days then he had to die the opponents they definitely will cut off krishnaram's head just as you just think if you are on the way on the highway you are not in your state you are on vacation so you are only to enjoy your vacation in another state and there will be no any relatives reside in that state so now you are on the way and something happened to your car now you took your car on a shoulder and after that what you will do definitely you first call 911 for help in the same way krishnaram sastri he understood what would happen in a life whether that was a problem or any news of happiness meaning in the time of misery or happiness in both time duty of bhagwan swami he definitely first go to vanaf ekantik san in the same way krishnaram sastri also reached to goparan swami he prayed to swami swami i made a great mistake swami while smiling because swami was such a son who knew about everything one's past present as well as the future so swami, swami while smiling he asked what happened then krishnaram said swami he narrated the whole incident and he said swami i made a mistake without uh, referring my astrology book i proclaim that there will be no any lunar eclipse after two days and in the court year of the sahaja rao i took an oath that if there will be any lunar eclipse after two days then please cut off my head so swami now i have no fear of death because i firmly n- know that if i will be die at whatever time in whatever condition even for whatever reason but at that time bhagwan swami definitely will come to me to take me into his akshardham but the problem is that those opponents they were not a devotee of bhagwan swami they were all opposites oppositors and that's why they speak very ill about our satsang and bhagwan swami narayan so please do something then swami said let me think for some time and swami thought if i stop the eclipse then what happen if there will be no any lunar eclipse then the opponents he will be die and if there will be lunar eclipse then the devotee will be die then now what to do then swami decided what to do and the next day swami uh, the same day swami told krishnaram krishnaram you now go to your home and without any tension you 
go to sleep. There will be no problem. Nothing will happen to you. Krishnaram went to his home and he slept. Now, the next day, Swami himself went to the courtyard with Krishnaram Sastri. And Swami in the courtyard revealed the truth to all those opponents, the other scholars. Swami said, See, you said there will be lunar eclipse. Krishnaram said there will be no any lunar eclipse. But the truth is that there will be lunar eclipse the next day, but the eclipse cannot be seen here in this region. Then the opponents, the, they were also scholars, so they opened their astrology book and they saw to Swami, please see in this book, according to our astrology book, according to our maths, it's true that there will be lunar eclipse the next day. Then Swami said, even though whatever written in your book, that doesn't matter, whatever your astrology maths, that doesn't matter, but there will be lunar eclipse the next day, but it cannot be seen here in this region. So in this way, Swami said, uh, uh, in this way, Swami said all this truth uh, to all those opponents, and Swami came back to his residence. The next day, all those opponents, they tried to watch on the moon when or where there will be lunar eclipse, but no one can found any kind of uh, symptoms or characteristic that uh, on the moon that uh, one can say that there is a lunar eclipse. Even they didn't believe, so they sent some people outside from the city from 30 miles away. And those people also didn't, did not found anything in the sky. So there will be no any lunar eclipse can be seen in the sky. This is what Sadhguru Gopan and Swami, he used his divine power. He even can do everything. And that is why Bhagavan Swami and himself says for such ekantik santo in the Vajnamrut, 27 of Gurdha first chapter. Maharaj says, the powers of such a son are such that since it is God who sees through his eyes, he empowers the eyes of all of the beings in the Brahman. And since it is God who walks through his legs, he is also capable of undoing the strain to walk to the legs of all of the beings in the Brahman. Thus, since it is God who resides in all of the indriyas of such a son, that son is able to empower the indriyas of all of beings in the Brahman. Therefore, such a son is the sustainer of the world. Meaning, he can do everything in this world. So this is the power like that of Bhagwan himself. This is only because of Bhagwan resides forever in the heart of sons and that's why he can also be able to do whatever Bhagwan can do. In this way, Sadhguru Gopan and Swami saved Krishnaram's life as well as the opponent's life. Because if Gopan and Swami was powerful, he had such a divine power to stop the eclipse. But if Swami totally stopped the eclipse, then the opponents, he will be die according to his oath. And that is why Swami used his power in such a way that no one can die. So this is what Sadhguru Gopan Swami's divine power. Many times he used his power to save devotees life. Many times he used his power for the benefit of all of the people. And many times without using his divine power only by his saintliness, only teaching 
some principles from the scriptures to the devotee he remove worldly desire from the heart of the devotees and install the divine form of bhagwan in devotee's heart this is what all kind of power possessed by our santo even today we have such an ekantik sant we attain in the form of four puja guru ji we realize that bhagwan swami and himself forever reside in him and that's why he can also do what your bhagwan can do in many incident many times even we realize that even though there is no any symptoms and if he said there will be rain soon then there will be rain if in the season of monsoon if there will be very heavy rain in all the region and if he said there will be no rain in particular this town or particular this place then even though there there was very heavy rain in all surrounding areas still there will be no any even a single drop came from the sky in particular place or town this is what the same greatness possessed by our puja guru ji if we observe such kind of incident happen in life of puja guru ji then by observing his day to day life in such a vision we can also realize his greatness and if we realize his greatness then we definitely go near to him and if we gradually go near to him then one day we will also definitely without any endeavoring for attaining god we himself realize bhagwan this is what the principle or the climpus of the scriptures and this is the only thing what bhagwan swami narayan many many times said in the vachana group and that is why bhagwan swami narayan says the same thing in 59th vachana group of the second chapter that only bhagwan and his son can grant liberation श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय श्रीपति श्रीधर सर्वेश्वर भक्तिदर्मात्मज वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनायण नीलकंठम भजे श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय